Hello, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, Feliz Navidad, and welcome to LFC Focus. It is post-match reaction show time after Liverpool have just beaten Arsenal by five goals to one at Anfield. And you want to know the best part about it? Liverpool managed to do that without even being that good. I mean, yeah, we were fine, but it's not like we were on fire. It's not like we were ripping them to shreds. That wasn't even probably the best Liverpool performance we've seen so far this season. And yet we absolutely dismantled the so-called fifth best team in the country, according to the league table, by five goals to one. I mean, that is just out of this world incredible. That is not a normal thing for a football team to be able to do. Liverpool should not be able to rock up and just play their standard game and get a result like that. And yet this Liverpool team is so, so good right now that that is exactly what they have just done. And I think that there isn't really anything about that performance apart from the first goal we conceded that you can't give credit to. And even that it was so impressive how we recovered from that. And I think a lot of that is just down to the confidence that has been bred through this side. The fact that when that first goal went in, my first thought wasn't, oh, oh, we might lose this game. We might draw. We might not get the three points we need. This could even end up being a bit of a slog. My first thought was just that I was a bit annoyed we lost our clean sheet. I was a bit annoyed that this incredible defence that has, after this game, only conceded eight goals in 20 games, has let another goal in, especially a goal as cheap as that. But it was so, so impressive because we recovered from it really really quickly and I mean we didn't really look like conceding a goal after that and given how how good a move it was from Arsenal how they did slice our defense open we just recovered straight away the defenders got themselves together they worked out what went wrong and made sure <clears throat> that it didn't happen again and that is absolutely fantastic this Liverpool team is capable of getting even better within matches and yeah we had some slices of luck with the goals that Arsenal scored you know the first one especially it comes from that rebound that gives Bobby Firmino the classic no look finish that he loves to pull out whenever he's got an open yet from a, a yard out or something ridiculous like that but he was absolutely on fire today as well I think he's got to get the man of the match award there were there were so many players on the pitch for Liverpool today that could have got the award Gino Wijnaldum especially was fantastic in midfield all the way through you know he absolutely dictated that tempo he was in control he masterminded the entire match but Firmino when he gets a hat trick and when he gets a second goal like that as well that was outrageous it was unbelievable you know especially given his form hasn't been great so far this season those were his first league goals at Anfield since April now I know he scored some in Europe and he scored some away from home in the Premier League as well but given how much he struggled for goals at Anfield so far this season for him to just come out and score three and score a second goal like that even though, like we say, his form hasn't been great so far this season. He hasn't looked like the Firmino of old. He just pulls that out like it's absolutely nothing. Like it's the easiest thing in the world. And that's what I mean about the fact that Liverpool weren't at their best today. We weren't absolutely dominating Arsenal. But when it mattered, when we needed to just pull out moments of brilliance, we showed our quality. We showed that we were just a class above Arsenal at times. And they just couldn't deal with Liverpool. Even though we only turned it on a couple of times, when we did, Arsenal had absolutely no reply. So yeah, the first goal, it comes with a bit of fortune. But then again, so does Arsenal's goal as well because both of them come from poor defending. The second goal, Firmino, absolutely incredible. Man of the match. 10 out of 10 performance, deserves his hat trick, absolutely phenomenal player, who would ever doubt him. And then the third goal, just again, really, really smart play from Liverpool. And it's something that's been picked up on recently is our ability to actually score goals from the second phase of set pieces. It happened twice against Wolves where both of our goals come from set pieces that have been cleared and then Liverpool take advantage of like the disorganisation that comes out of a defence because of that. It happened again today where Arsenal, they think they've got the corner clear, they think they're in the clear, they think they're all right. So they start to push out again. They move their line up a little bit and that is where Liverpool strike. And it's 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 a it's a symptom essentially of just how good our fullbacks are because most teams leave their fullbacks back from corners because they've got pace and stuff like that. But we've got an added bonus in terms of the fact that our fullbacks are really, really good crosses of the ball, that they're really good ball playing defenders because it's Robertson who plays that fantastic ball through to Salah. He picks up on that run when no one else does. And then it's great control from Salah to make sure the ball stays down. And Sadio Mane just about tucks it away. And then the first penalty, 
you know what? I'd say it's a penalty. I think it's another one of those instances where in the past, Salah wouldn't have gone down and you'd criticise him because at the end of the day, whether he goes down or not, it's interrupting his momentum. It's slowing him down. It's stopping him from getting a clean shot away from goal. So even though it's a bit unnatural to go down, it's still a foul. It still should be a penalty because he's impeding him in a goal scoring situation. So if anything, I'm just happy that Mo Salah is starting to get a bit more cunning in those situations. And yeah, He's going to get people calling him a diver, but that kind of thing always happens when you're as good as Mo Salah. It happened to Luis Suarez as well when he was banging in 30 goals a season. Everyone was looking for a reason to hate him because, you know, that's what happens. People don't like to see teams doing better than them and Liverpool are doing better than every other team in the country at the moment. So it's no surprise that people are having a dig at Mo Salah, but I think he's right to go down there. He's right to, again, ask a question of the referee. The referee doesn't have to give a penalty, but he does because he thinks Mo Salah's been found and I think fair enough and then yeah not the best penalty he does slam it down the middle I think the sooner we find someone who can actually take penalties on a regular basis consistently the better because Salah yeah he scored his last two but I don't think he's that good from the spot but at the end of the day I'm not going to criticize a guy who's already scored 13 Premier League goals this season and is now the joint top scorer in the league with I think Aubameyang and Harry Kane at the moment I certainly wouldn't put it past, put it past Mohamed Salah to storm away from those two in the second half of the season so yeah probably a penalty for me the second penalty that happens in the second half maybe a bit borderline I think it's one of them that definitely got given in the World Cup when they brought out VAR and it was like this new toy that they had and they'd just give any penalty for a foul from a set piece and stuff like that I think because it's right in front of the referee he's kind of right to give it because he's got a clear view of the situation and everything like that again it's soft sometimes you see them given sometimes you don't but at the end of the day I think Liverpool did probably deserve a five goal win today I think they were just that good without being amazing I mean we, we actually just took our foot off the gas for the last half an hour. All of us were desperate for a sixth goal, a seventh goal. We wanted to see more from this Liverpool side. We wanted to see us absolutely put Arsenal to the sword. But Jurgen Klopp was actually smart in the way that he set the team up for this game. He essentially set the team up knowing that despite this being Arsenal, we could still have it won within an hour. And that's essentially what we did because once we got to the hour mark, having already played that game against Newcastle with a very similar starting eleven, and with that all-important game against Manchester City, in a few days time that could potentially not win the title race I'm not going to be silly but it could certainly push our advantage home so far that it will look unassailable to the teams behind us but it's just a mark of the absolute dominance and brilliance of this Liverpool side that we're capable of getting to the hour mark in a game against a team as good as Arsenal and saying you know what we've more than got this boxed off here we've got this boxed off to the point where they could have a sudden flurry and score like two goals and it still wouldn't even be a problem because we were that far ahead like I said <clears throat> without even being that good but I still do think there were some fantastic performers in there certainly individual performances I thought Firmino like I said on fire fantastic great to see him getting amongst the goals and he did deserve his first Liverpool hat-trick and I know I've talked about it a lot already but that second goal just blew my mind I mean especially because it's something that we maybe haven't seen that much from Firmino in the past. I know he's a good dribbler on the ball, but he's normally more about beating one defender and then playing a pass or a cross or a shot and something like that. He doesn't normally go on the kind of mazy runs where he beats multiple players. So it's something we haven't seen from his locker before, but that's what's so great about this season is we're seeing players who we know are brilliant, who we know are fantastic, that we saw get to a Champions League final last season, and yet they're coming up yet another level. Players like Andy Robertson, who was great last season, Season, is now the best left back in the Premier League without a shadow of a doubt. Players like Gina Van Alden, who we knew were fantastic, but is now becoming one of the best midfielders in the league as well. You know, delivering yet another probably 10 out of 10 performance today. Like I said, dictating the tempo. I thought Sadio Mane was fantastic as well. While he did fade a little bit towards the end of the game and obviously came off for Jordan Henderson, who I thought, again, was great, essentially playing number 10 because, like I said, the game was run. The game was won even. Arsenal were absolutely spent. So he thought, you know what? I'm just going to play as an attacking midfielder and try and get a goal from distance or something ridiculous like that and with it being 5-1 up 
fair play. Why wouldn't you? But I thought a good performance from Henderson off the bench. But yeah, Sadio Mane just was a threat. Just was a pain in the backside for that Arsenal defence. And just caused them more problems than they wanted to deal with. And I think that's the thing with Liverpool today. I think Arsenal was set up to deal with a little bit of pressure from Liverpool. But at the end of the day, they just couldn't be bothered to handle us for the full 90 minutes. And it showed because Liverpool plugged away. They just kept creating those top quality chances that Arsenal couldn't deal with. And I thought... I know I said it wasn't a great team performance and maybe there were some good individuals in there, but I don't think anyone really deserved less than an 8 out of 10. Maybe apart from Fabinho, who was a good performer, apart from a couple of mistakes here and there. But again, a mark of how good this Liverpool side is, that you can make a couple of mistakes and you can rely on the fact that the other 10 players on the pitch will bail you out because, you know, we weren't that great for the first 10 minutes. Arsenal applied a fair bit of pressure. They created some chances. They actually scored their goal from us giving the ball away a bit cheaply. And that's what I mean about how this Liverpool team is so good now that they, they've passed every test so you don't feel under pressure in any situation. The fact that we managed to get out of jail in the Burnley game, I think meant that, and you know, I'm not comparing Burnley to Arsenal, but there's similar situations where you go 1-0 down and you start to worry that maybe you're going to be in a little bit of trouble here. But Liverpool just felt absolutely fine. They didn't, they didn't struggle at all. And yet, like I said, a slice of fortune with the goals that they score to go 2-1 up. But when you're winning the league and when you're playing as good as this Liverpool side is... Those things happen to you. You will get slices of fortune because your luck balances out in the end. So, yeah, a fantastic performance from Liverpool. Made more fantastic by the fact they won 5-1 and they felt like they still had a couple more gears to go to. It still feels like there's more to come against Manchester City at the Etihad on Thursday. It feels like when we play that game, we can step up a couple more gears and really bring our A game against Manchester City. And that is absolutely phenomenal. So, yeah, all things considered, a great game. Spurs lost as well, which means that whatever happens with Man City's game tomorrow, we will be seven points clear, which is bananas. I mean, if City don't get a win, we'll be nine points clear, which means the Etihad, um, and it was said, I think, by Paul on the Redmen TV, not a free hit necessarily, but almost a game where you say, you know what, we can sit back, we can invite pressure on, because a point is still a pretty good result. And who thought we'd be saying that a couple of months ago when Man City were still ahead of us. So yeah, this Liverpool team is boss. This has been a slightly incoherent post-match video, but when you win 5-1 against Arsenal and you're clear at the top of the league by seven points, what on earth do you guys even expect? So yeah, that is all for today's video. Thank you guys very, very much for watching. If you did enjoy this video, hit that like button down there. Hit that subscribe button there if you're around here. Check out some of the other videos that have been out on the channel over the past few days as well. Don't forget to follow at LFC Focus TV on Twitter and I'll be back soon with the pre-match content for that crunch game against City at the Etihad. Until then, bye for now.